welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be entering into our world of magic as we continue our process of painting up the playing pieces from Hero Quest. <laughs> today we're going to be painting up those one eyed menaces, the Vermeer, which are one of the few creatures which didn't actually make it onto the box art for Hero Quest. Now, I have to admit, these are not one of my favourites. The detail can be a bit soft in places and the way the sculpt is, it can be a little bit tricky to work out where edges of things are supposed to be. That said, once they get on the game board, these guys are pretty powerful and they're going to give those heroes a real run for their money. So let's get them ready to do battle, getting out the paintbrushes, let's get painting. Now you could of course just paint the Vermeer exactly the same way as the orcs or the goblins, the same green skin tone and they're going to look really good on the table. I do like the green tone rather than say a blue or a red or something else. I do like them as green skins but I do think they need to be a little bit different just so they stand out a bit more. So I'm going for a much more browny tone here with this colour. Once that dark earth base coat has been applied, I'm then going to go over the top of that with an Agrax earth shade, just so that this wash goes down into all the crevices and adds a bit more depth into those deep parts, gives it a bit more of a three-dimensional nature. Agrax is great because it's got a kind of greeny brown tone to it anyway, which goes really well with this dark earth base. Once that's dry, I'm then going to punch up the contrast a bit more by going back over and dry brushing that dark earth colour back over the top, covering up some of that agrach which has muted down the colour a bit. I feel that that's gone a little too much into the brown there, so I'm using this light green, dry brushing it over the top again, just to introduce a bit more of a green tone to the overall skin. And while that looks good, I think it's a little too green again now. So dry brushing a bit more of that dark earth over the top, just very gently, just to mute down some of those green areas where there's a little bit too much green. It's a little bit clumpy. And you'll find that it's just going back and forth with different colours until you're happy with the end result. Once the skin is looking acceptable, it's then on to the details. And I'm starting here with all of the leather work on this guy, using this dark, dark leather brown from Revel in order to put in all of the straps which are holding his armor on. And you can see I'm using quite a fine brush here. I'm not wanting to get any spillage going over onto this green skin, which we've already spent so long getting just right. Now I really like this dark, dark brown, so as well as using it on the leather straps, I'm also going to use it on all of the wood. So on this Vermeer, I'm going to use it on his axe shaft. You need to be careful around the head of the axe and around where the shaft meets his hand, but everywhere else you can be quite quick. The manacles around his wrists could of course be a studded leather as well, but for these I'm going to go for a metal colour, almost as if he's just broken out of some chains. So for this I'm using a lead belcher as a base and you can see it's got a really nice sheen on it, but it's got a nice darkness to this metal colour. And I'm going to use that on his chainmail loincloth as well. For his more ceremonial armour, I want that to be much more bright, much more dazzling and much more ornate, as if he's a guard in a throne room. So for this we're going with a brass scorpion, which is this really nice gold colour, and I'm applying that to his breastplate, or more of a belly plate in this guy's case, his shoulder plates, and also onto the studs on his wrist manacles. With the armour done, I'm then going to add just a little bit of red to the centre of the belly plate and the shoulder plates, just to break up that brass or gold colour a bit more and to add a bit more interest. This red because that's what it's got on the monster cards for the Vermeer. For this red, I'm using Evil Sun's Scarlet, which goes on nicely and it's a good layer paint for this. We're getting to the fine detail now, so I'm using a really, really fine tipped brush here in order to add some wraith bone onto the teeth 
and his one central cyclops eye here. I'm not using white because I find white is too bright, it's too, much too stark of a colour. Using Wraithbone is much nicer because it's slightly muted, slightly creamier and it just looks a lot more natural. For the pupil, I'm using a very, very small dot of black paint. This is black from Revel here. Fine tip brushed, making sure I'm steadying my hands against each other to make sure it's not wobbly. And just because I really want him to look alive, I'm adding a tiny spot of pure white here onto the eye just to give that light reflection to give him some more life. I'm then going to go back with that Agrax Earthshade and add a tiny little bit around the eye here. This is just to really cover up any spillage of white where it's gone onto some of the skin where you really don't want it. So just to make that eye really nice and neat because it's going to be the main focal point of this model, just going back in over the skin, touching it up a little bit more. I'm then going to use a little bit more of that Agrax in order to go over the top of that brass armour just to tone it down some more. It's slightly too bright for my liking. This is a dungeon dweller. He's going to be grimy, so that armour is going to be weathered. I'm also going to add some more of that Agrax onto the head of his axe to weather that down and make it look a bit more beaten and not so shiny and new looking. That armour is nice and weathered now, but it's slightly too muted too much of a single colour. So I'm now using a little bit of copper and just very finely brushing that onto the highlights, the high points, just to really bring some more of that shine back, but to make it more three-dimensional and stand out a bit better. I'm then going to go back over that red just to really make it pop more and to get rid of that mutedness from the Agrax. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing with my lead belcher, just picking out those high points, those raised areas that are going to reflect the light more, just to give it more depth and interest. I want that axe to look not only worn and dingy, but like it's been used in combat. So I'm using a very watered down purple red colour here, almost like a wash, but stippling it on. And when this dries, it'll go much more of a pinky shade. That then gives me a nice reddish base which I can then go back over the top of with more of this purple red but without thinning it down and I'm just stippling this on with a really splayed brush because it gives a nice mottled effect. I'm just going to use a very small amount of Emperor's Children, this really quite bright pinky colour to add in some highlights onto the jewels on his armour. This is just where the sun's going to be reflecting or the light's going to be reflecting off of the jewel and giving it a little bit of highlight. That just adds a little bit more life and drama to it. Time for toenails and for this I'm just applying a very small amount of beige with a very fine brush tip. Then a bit of Revel Brown dry brushed with a wide flat brush onto the axe shaft here. This just breaks up that dark brown, adds a different lighter brown tone over the top of it and that gives it much more interest. A little bit of Agrax again over the top of those beige nails in order to blend them into the rest of the feet a bit more and then back over the top of that with another little bit of beige just to make those pop out some more. His clubbed tail is then the final thing that I have to paint, so for this I'm using a bit of leather brown on that big spiky ball on the end of his tail and gently kind of working that down into the green and the rest of his tail so that it blends from that brown into that green. I want those spikes to show up a little bit more so I'm going to base them with a leather brown first of all with a fine tipped brush and then I'm going to finish them off with a little bit of beige just on those high points so that they really do stand out when they're on the table. And finally it's time for the base. I'm not doing anything fancy like flagstones or anything like that. I'm just going for a single colour which is going to look quite nice but not detract from the actual miniature itself. For this I'm using Humbrol 
metal coat polished steel and I'm using this for all of my miniatures in Hero Quest. The good thing with this is that as it dries and it starts to get a bit more clumpy, you can stipple it on with an old brush and that will give you some nice texture to it without having to mix in sand or anything like that. And then the very final step is to buff up that metal coat paint, give it a bit of good old elbow grease, give it a nice bit of a shine with an old piece of disposable cloth and it really brings up the texture on those high points and it's got the darker points where it's not shining and that gives a really nice interesting base. And that's my Vermeer done. You can see the three at the front here are this kind of darker brown color scheme, which I've just shown you how to paint here. Whereas the three that I've got at the back are a much more green color, much more like the orcs and goblins in the rest of my Hero Quest game. The brown just gives a nice interesting contrast to that green and it adds a bit more variety. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like to tell us how you get on with painting, please leave a message in the comments below. Or if you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please get in touch. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here. And there's going to be plenty more of this coming up. Until next time though, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.